this video picks up where the last video left off. So we're talking about aperture and this nice little chart shows you um, all the different apertures um, that are available for the most part. Um, the f 2.8 is not the smallest. The f I just saw the other day, they now make a camera that has f 0.33 f-stop. <laughs> um, and you can see over here <laughs> that um, cameras that have very, very um, uh, small numbers on the, on, for the bottom, uh, very large apertures, um, because of the mechanics involved in getting the aperture, are very expensive. <laughs> um, uh, so for the most part, they actually, in general, range from 1.2 to 6.4. Uh, so anything above or larger than the 2.8 would be higher on the chart and anything beyond the 22 would be lower on the chart. And so what the nice thing about this chart does is it gives you the ones that are considered the full stops. Okay, so these are the main ones that pretty much most every lens has, not all. Um, you can get some lenses that the, the largest opening is a, a 5.6. Those are the very in inexpensive lenses. Um, and they will give you a very um, narrow, because sometimes they only go up to F16. They will give you a very narrow depth of field. <clears throat> so when you're looking for uh, more control, the more F-stops you have, the more control you have. So th this one starts at 2.8. And then it shows you the full stops. And these are the half stops, which are the ones in, the in between. And some lenses have third stops. Mine has some of my lenses, the Nikon lenses that I have, Nikkor lenses that I have, um, have a lot, of, have most of these and go beyond. The, I think the one of my fixed lens, light length lenses goes up to F34 even and down to f 1.2 so you can get a very wide range on lenses if you're willing to pay more so when we talk about a full stop you can see one stop that means when we go between the full stops so when we go between 2.8 and 4 that is a full stop and that's when you're that's in this case halving or to go from 2.8 to 4 or doubling to go from 4 to 2.8 and the same is true through any of these so if you're, if you're talking to someone and they said, open it up a stop, they mean the next full stop. If you're talking to someone and they say, stop it down two stops to get, the better, to get a better exposure, they mean literally to go down two full stops. You can use the ones in between um, to get more uh, finesse. I find that most uh, uh, photojournalists who shoot people in in daylight in active situations will shoot at um, f 5.6 because it gives them um, enough control and the nice thing is pretty much every lens gives you f 5.6 um, so the higher larger f stop right is giving us more light but we're gonna have less depth of field and I'm gonna show you what that is here in a minute the smaller f stops bring in less light, but they offer you more depth of field. And this is nice over here because um, it talks about how the widest apertures, uh, let's see what it says here that I need to tell you about. The widest apertures have f-stops with the smallest numbers, as we've discussed. The maximum aperture available depends on the lens you're using, as we've discussed. On many zoom lenses, for example, the maximum aperture gets smaller as you zoom in. Yeah, that's something we haven't. So when you have a zoom lens and you rotate your zoom, it changes the f-stops that are available to that lens because f-stops are tied to the lens. And then you have the medium apertures in the middle. These give you the best quality images, but they tend to be mid-range on depth of field and that may be problematic. So. Um, it's right. Think of it as a balancing act with some compromise required. 
And these are decisions you have to make every time you take a photo. Do what do I need? Um, as as the resolution on digital cameras becomes sharper, you you can start to go more outside this range. This this range, this bracket tends to move a little bit more because you can do things in Photoshop and Lightroom to help sharpen your photos. Um, and then the smallest apertures obviously have the minimum amount of light. Um, and again, some lenses stop at f16, others go down to f32. I, I have some that do. Um, as the aperture gets smaller, you get a better, a bigger depth of field. Um, however, you tend to lose a little bit of quality due to diffraction. And diffraction is when you bend light. So what happens is as the light goes through this tiny little opening, it, it bends. And so it creates some distortion when it hits the sensor in the back. Okay, let's move on this next slide. Okay, and so here you can see, um, this is down here at the bottom, is showing us at f2.8, the subject is your what you're focusing on with your camera. You focus on the subject. The background is very blurry. And you see why that's nice. It gives a very three-dimensional feel to a photograph because this is more how our eye sees. When we're looking, we, our eyes the, on our retina, the main cluster of cells is directly behind your pupil. And it can only focus sharply on what you're looking at, directly looking at. And everything outside of that, the further you get away, has fewer receptors, cells. So it's blurrier. So this provides that three-dimensional feel to your shots that a lot of people like. Um, and then as you can see, as we start to stop down, now we're in the middle, you see what happens. The subject's in focus and the background is slightly bl blurry and it, it provides some separation, right? We do get some separation, but nowhere near as much as we do on the far end over here. And as I talk about this, F uh, 5.6 is what a lot of uh, photo photographers use when they're out shooting people on the street or in the field t doing photojournalism and you can see it's a nice compromise you still have a pretty blurry background that creates you know a fair amount of three-dimensional three-dimensionality makes your subject very clear and easier to see um, but not as much as these and it's because this is closer to the middle and the middle it provides you the best uh, sharpest focus and then you see as we move, as we begin to stop down, we, we lose the blurriness in the background. And sometimes that's okay. Sometimes that's exactly what you want. Sometimes when you're shooting um, a landscape, you want everything to be in focus. Um, also, when you use F22, if there are any lights, say there's a, say there's suns coming up over the mountain right here, and you use F22, it will, it will do a starburst at this very tiny, opening because what's happened is the light refraction that can be bad for uh, resolution actually creates a very cool starburst effect on your on your in your image and um, we can look at some images that do that it's really really cool so this is a really nice little image to show you how the more light that lets in the more depth of field you have here is um, a photo that was taken with a <clears throat> very small, I would say this was taken with a 1.2 or 1.4 f-stop. Maybe, well, it depends on the lens because that also, that also has an impact. Um, when I shoot with my macro, this is a very small depth of field. This is probably a two. And you see the only thing in focus is the flower. What's back here is blurry and it gives a very three-dimensional, also a very artsy feel to my shot. This isn't my shot, it's someone else's. And here we, here we go, right? So here at, um, we're leaving the ISO the same across the board, and then we're adjusting our f-stop. And the f-stop, this is being shot with aperture priority, and the f-stop is controlling the, the speed, the shutter speed. Okay, so same exact composition. 
This one is um, with an ISO of, of 200. The f-stop here is being set at 2.8. This daisy in every case is what's the, the focus, which is your focal point, your subject. And so it's very clearly, sharply in focus. And as we move back, everything else starts to blur. You get that blurry background. And you see that it starts to give it more of a three-dimensional depth field. It also very clearly makes this a strong focal point. Then we move to 5.6, and you get, you get more in focus, right? So what's happening, and I'll show you a picture. I've got one down here. Your, your depth of field is literally that. Your field that is in focus gets wider. Here it's narrow. Here it's gotten a little bit wider. And then here when we bump this up to F11, you see the range of what's in focus is gotten deeper. There's, this is still out of focus back here. And if we took this to the next step and did F22, everything would be in focus. And what begins to happen when you have a whole lot of texture like this and everything's in focus, it, it, you, lose your, you lose your principles and elements of design. You get too much texture, you start to lose um, meaning, and it's hard for people to know what your subject is meant to be. I personally, and again, this is, this is, this is personal and subjective. I personally think that this makes it very clear, the, the middle photo makes it very clear that the, the, the subject in this photo are the flowers. Here, I, I don't know if I'm supposed to be looking at something else. Um, on the one on the right just has too much going on. It's too busy. The one on the left is beautiful. Um, but when you start working with minimalism in photography, everything has to be perfect and it gets a whole lot harder to do well. For instance, these sticking out over here, the leaves sticking out over here, this bright blur spot, these are all taking my eye up here and it's not leaving until I force myself to come over here. And so that ends up becoming problematic in this shot. If you came in here and blurred all this out, um, this, would, this would be a little bit of a better picture, but it's really hard to shoot at these very large openings, apertures, because of the fact that minimalism is a lot harder than most people think it is, because you now have these big blobs that start to fight in contrast with your subject. Over here, you can see the, 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 the same exact composition, but it works better because it's no longer um, a, a focal point on its own. Your eye may just kind of come over here, but then it, it tends to go on, stick to the flowers and stay within the composition as it's supposed to do. And so when you're shooting for depth of field, you may want to try multiple brackets I mean, multiple apertures, bracket multiple apertures, just to see what you get in the beginning. And then as you play around with this more and work with this more, you'll begin to know when you start to set up a set, I'm going to use F.6 and even then, or F5.6. And even then you may know, well, I'm going to try, you know, some others just, just to make sure I got the right shot. Because sometimes you can never go back. Sometimes when you're shooting something, the only opportunity you have to shoot it is in that moment. Okay, so we're getting close to the 15 uh, minute mark. We're gonna stop here and pick up here in the next video.